In this book, we very much put these questions of power and politics at the heart of the analysis, asking these questions about who sets the terms of transition and how, on whose behalf, what is it that's to be transformed and by whom. Alone, these four very active banks that I talk about in the chapter in this book, so the Brazilian Development Bank, the Chinese Development Bank, the KFW, and the European Investment Bank, uh, spend eight times as much as the worldwide uh, financial sector, which means all the venture capital worldwide, private equity, stock market, and corporate. And that's not necessarily good or bad, it's just something to think about. So, and of course, what that makes us think about is who's actually determining even within those green directions of, say, state investment banks, you know, the actual decisions that are being made. You know, so it sounds great that they're doing green investments, but by not, and this is perhaps a crucial point, by, by not admitting that these public actors are so important, they're in fact transformational, not just fixing market failures, but actually shaping deeply uh, the markets themselves, we actually haven't had enough of a debate about the directionality even within green. The politics of this are incredibly hard. This looks on climate change like a very elite form of politics, and there's a reason for that, which is the urgency. We have about 15 years to determine the future course of the climate. Um, it'll carry on being determined way beyond that, but we have no chance of keeping the global temperature uh, average to two degrees or less, or even near two degrees, unless very, very significant changes are made in the business as usual pattern of growth uh, um, and investment over the next 15 years. That will lock in the future course of climate, because the investments made in the next 15 years, as the new climate economy report showed, will lay down the infrastructure, which will then determine the energy consumption um, of, the, uh, uh, of the next 50 years. So yes, we've been naive and optimistic. We need to be much more savvy and combative if we are to achieve the green transformation needed to create a world fit for ourselves and the next generation. We need to recognize the power of losers to block progress, and we need to be much cleverer in design of policy measures so that they create a larger and larger constituency for progress in that direction. And there's some really wonderful examples from this book that show that. I'm also interested in the way that whether you're thinking about the preservation of forests or whether you're seeing your concern is about the rollout of, of renewable energy, the way in which by rooting things in community engagement, involvement and direct ownership is often critical to their success because from forests where some of the more recent research shows that where communities have titlement, have land tenure, um, deforestation in those parts of the Brazil and Amazon where there is land tenure for the indigenous communities is 11 times lower than in other areas. Similar and even more dramatic figures for Guatemala. We know that where the community has a stake in renewable energy, you lower resistance to it and you raise the chances of its success. If you don't have your copy already, there are many copies available at the back, so please don't leave without one.